So in this Google Glass world that we're heading into, there's no keyboard. So uh, if a company like Airbnb wants you to enter your credit card information, how do you do that uh, without a keyboard? Well, uh, Jumio has a way to optically do it, and they do uh, credit card and uh, identity systems for companies like Airbnb, and we're gonna talk to them right now. It's called Jumio. <laughs> Who are you? Mark Barish, and I'm CMO at Jumio. And tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I actually joined the web in 1997. I had a career in financial services. I was VP Marketing Advertising at Charles Schwab here in the city. And then in 97, I got the bug, and I joined my first startup. It was a company called InsWeb, online insurance marketplace, first of its kind. We took that baby public. And since then, I've done five more startups, either as CEO or CMO, and this will be my sixth. Wow. So. Uh, Back in the day, it wasn't even Web 1.0. We didn't think in those terms. It was just the wild, wild west, and then progressing through all the years that you two have been all over. Very cool. So uh, Jumio isn't for mm -hmm. consumers. It, you really sell to big enterprises who are going to uh, need to identify their customers in some way, right? That's right. Our client is the enterprise company, so it's business to business, but our user is their consumer, is their customer. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, is creating experiences for customers that not only achieve the business's goals, but actually are smoother, easier, more fun. And that's what we're doing with our, with our products in, in the marketplace today. So what is it that you guys do? Well, Jumio's solving the problem of how to authenticate that a person or their credentials really are who they say they are. You know, there's so many numbers that describe the amount of fraud in the marketplace. One came out yesterday that was more conservative. That's only $100 billion a year. So, which means we're all paying for it. It's in every good and service that we buy, we're paying for fraud. And that mostly stems from uh, what criminals are able to do in terms of uh, pre presenting themselves as people who they are not. So businesses have an obligation, both for their bottom line as well as to protect their, the, the regulations that they have to abide by, uh, to do a better job authenticating that the people that they're doing business with are indeed who they say they are. Yeah. And that's the problem that we're solving. And we do it in, uh, in two areas. It, it all stems from one core technology, which is uh, computer vision technology. The ability to use a, a camera on a device, mobile or desktop, and have that become the eye that essentially emulates, replicates what someone behind a counter would do, where we're used to walking up and showing our ID to, log, to get into a hotel or to uh, make a money transfer. And someone looks at our ID and they say, oh, that's you, okay, let's do it. Uh, well, that, how do you do that in a virtual world? And that's the problem that we're solving. So, you know, I, I used to work in retail and um, I'm, mm -hmm. I, would, I got pretty adept at, at telling whether an ID was real or not because it has holograms and it has mm -hmm. uh, a feel to it and, it, it, you know, it has verifiable information on it. Uh, how do you do that with a camera? Well, that's our magic technology. That's the, that's the <laughs> secret sauce behind what we do is we have um, very strong technology and algorithms that look at the uh, ID or the card that's being held up and evaluate it from all kinds of perspectives, like the way the light bounces off the plastic, the shadows of the embossed numbers, um, the placement of different elements on each card, the holograms, and so forth. And with credit cards, it's, it's difficult, but it's a pretty defined field. You know, all cards are the same size. They're all made out of plastic. When you get to IDs, Think about a Bulgarian driver's license or a U.S. passport. I mean, they're radically different. Yeah. Some are plastic, some are paper, some have plastic on top. Different placement, different ears, so it gets radically more complex on the, on the ID side of things. Interesting. So let's say Rackspace needed to verify the admins uh, who are signing up for cloud computing or, or hosting. What would I need to do to use your system? Right? Well, this wouldn't be the best use case because it would be a, a very defined audience of admins who are employees and you know who they are. So the better use case would be, look, I'll talk about NetVerify, our ID verification product first. Um, Airbnb has a program called Verified ID and we power a piece of it. And their goal is to create more trust and safety within the community of renters and, and home owners. So if you want to rent a property on Airbnb, chances are, and you're a first-time user, chances are Airbnb will ask you to verify your ID. 
and imagine you're, you're on your mobile or you're on you know, your desktop and the last thing you want to do is the old-fashioned way of doing it, which is walking over to the scanner and taking a photocopy and scanning it and uploading and emailing it, which is the way it's done. It's sort of a showstopper. It's really inefficient and expensive to process and inaccurate because it's not a primary copy of the, of the ID. So that's the process as it exists today. And we come in and say, well, there's got to be a smoother way to do this. So instead, we are integrated into Airbnb's app and website with our SDK or, or a web service. And when a consumer, when it comes time for them to validate, they simply go through a very simple process and hold up their ID, you know, that Bulgarian passport or that you know, Slovakian uh, driver's license to their webcam and we scan it and we validate it and we extract the information off of it and we make that available to Airbnb. And the whole thing takes, you know, seconds as opposed to hours, yeah. keeping the transaction flow. And very difficult to trick the system. I can't say anything is perfect, but uh, we have very strong algorithms and other processes. So if I, if I print out a credit card on my, oh, on yeah. my color printer, it, <laughs> it, it won't? We'll bump that one pretty quick, uh, okay. just because you know, it doesn't have the right light and the algorithms will, will note that it's not, the light isn't bouncing off the plastic properly. So we will be able to reject those, uh, uh, both credit cards or IDs that really aren't bona fide. Yeah. And then in the case that it is bona fide, not only approve it, but also extract the information from it and put yep. that into the transaction. So it becomes a big convenience thing on top of being a validation So I don't device. have to fill in my address. If I show it a driver's that, license, it already knows my, my Well, address. in the driver's license case specifically, we would be picking up the address. And in the credit card case, we Of course, it could up, be wrong, but, uh, you know, because I could have moved. That's people, right. But then I could correct it, you know. Well, that's absolutely right. So, so the way we got to this business, if I could take a quick digression, yeah. is uh, Daniel Mattis, the CEO, and he founded Jaja, which was an early Skype competitor. And, uh, yeah. you know, with-, with um, I remember it. You remember yeah, Jaja. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that's right, yes. Well, he sends regards. And uh, what he determined there is, is the, he detected this giant fraud business that was using um, uh, VoIP minutes as currency, a way to launder money. So uh, while you would think he would spend all of his time kind of building out a fabulous voice product, he spent most of his time building out a fabulous fraud detection and prevention platform, which ultimately that's where most of the value of the company ended up residing when they sold it to Telefonica. So he was, his takeaway from that was fraud can't be something you deal with later as you sweep up behind the great idea that is your business. It has to be front and center whenever you design a business. That was one takeaway. Then on a personal level, he was on vacation, he was in France. He, he is Austrian and has an Austrian address and a credit card from an Austrian bank. And he was trying to buy an airline ticket for somebody else. Yeah. So everything was wrong in terms of the fraud detectors. He was the wrong IP address and it wasn't in his name. The ticket was being bought, it was a new credit card. He had just moved houses. It took him four or five hours on the phone trying to prove that it was who he said it was. And all the while he's thinking, why can't I just use my ID online? That would be so simple. Yep. And in that simple wish was the idea of Jumio, and not just that, the name too, because just use my ID online is an acronym that spells out Jumio, and that sort of was the genesis of, of his idea. And then that was in 2010, founded the company, Andreessen Horowitz and City uh, Ventures came on in, and Eduardo Severin as uh, a round of investors, and uh, we've been growing rapidly since. Well, we, we can see how important this new world is, particularly as we get more into wireless or wearable computers where we don't want, want a key in data. That's right? right, and that applies to mobile as well. The, um, the typical transaction time uh, to do a credit card uh, entry on checkout page is almost 60 seconds. So everyone, think of how much money and effort has been spent to bring the customer to that checkout page, and then there's big abandonment just because of the sheer pain. We did a survey with um, Harris Interactive and found that some 47% of mobile buyers have abandoned transactions because it was too painful to go through the checkout. Yeah. So um, just by making that process simpler by using a camera to scan, and I can show you what I mean, uh, it, it makes the throughput higher, and we measure that as about a 20% conversion increase just from improving that, that aspect of checkout. Well, let, let's see it. I'm going to okay. stay, stay away from shooting your, because that's a real credit that card. That is a real credit card. So 
We'll let you scan. Okay. Well, scanner. I'm going to show you. We don't have a consumer-facing app. Uh, we're we have it via an SDK that we integrate into our clients. So one of our wonderful, fabulous clients is Travelocity, yeah. and uh, they have uh, their their app for uh, purchasing hotel rooms. So if I want to get uh, this particular hotel, uh, I would go through their standard process, and I'd select my room. Move the credit card over. There Thank you. <laughs> yep. And I'm just about to select the room. And then you see this is the the credit card. Uh, entry page, yep. which in effect is a relic from like 1995. Yep. So apps have advanced wildly, but checkout pages are just big screens crammed in small ones. And then here you see auto scan with credit card. Not terribly explanatory, this happens to be a white label implementation. But when you hit this little button, yep. is when it starts interacting with our technology. Oh, okay. That's right. So, so what it is? So it, right now it's looking yeah. at at the plastics and the yes. holograms and and all determining that. that it's a bona fide and valid piece of plastic, and then extracting the information. These are the last four digits and yeah. the expiration code. And the consumer enters the CVV, completes the transaction. Yeah. So that that's NetSwipe, and what this does is, first of all, it practically reduces uh, friendly fraud down to zero and chargebacks as well, because it's very hard to dispute something when you know that there's a record that you held up your. <laughs> credit card yeah. and the second thing is most big credit card fraud is programmatic it's it's criminals and all over the world who are buying 50,000 stolen credit card numbers and <clears throat> running huge operations it's it's very difficult to create really good fake plastic and have enough of them to do fraud at scale yeah so what it does in, in the language of the industry is it turns a card not present transaction into effectively a card present transaction, yeah. just as if you were standing in front of the store clerk and giving them your card. And you also still needed to enter the number on the back, the which CDG, yes. means that you have to have the card on you That's, or memorize the number or, That's or right. you've stolen the number and the card. But that. if you stole the car, you, you know, somebody reports that it's stolen and the transaction. That's right, and that's not the source. No one's worried about those one-off thefts because yeah. it's, it's minimal and reported. It's really the big programmatic stuff. So it reduces fraud and then it increases revenue just because of the simplicity of the process. It, it tends to push conversion rate up by about 20% is what we've seen. Wow. So very, very powerful and a simple thing now, how to much, do. How much will an Airbnb pay Jimio? Well, what I just um, showed you was our net swipe app, which is specific to credit cards. It all stems from the same platform and technology. Um, and what NetVerify is, is the, is the identification, authentication app that Airbnb, for example, uses within their process. And um, uh, I can't tell you what their price is. They're tough negotiators, let me yeah. say. Um, but we do price this as a SaaS business, a SaaS product, so it's priced uh, on a per license basis, but a company needs one license, really, per year, unlimited admins. And that's how, we, and then we sell that typically in 12 month uh, uh, durations. Very cool. How, how good does the camera have to be? Because there's a lot of uh, new Firefox phones. And, That's right. And, uh, you know, the Google Glass yeah. has a 5 megapixel camera. It's not a 41 megapixel well. camera. That's here <laughs> in Nokia. It, it obviously works with the uh, iPhone. So. It does. So if our CTO were here, you'd see he has no hair because he's pulled it out because of camera issues, but not as it relates to mobile devices. Almost all mobile devices have cameras that are just fine for this purpose. It's desktop devices that could have cameras that are nine years old. And um, that's where the challenge is. Both of our products live in mobile as well as uh, uh, desktop. And you know, scanning technology has been around for a long time, flatbed scanners, but that controls two things, light and movement. You own that, you know, perfect lighting, no movement. But when you're uh, at home at night and your hands moving and you've got bad lighting in the room and a bad, you know, 1998 Dell computer or little webcam, it's very, very difficult to neutralize all those factors to create good vision. And that's what a lot of our technology does is create things that are readable in spite of the movement and the light. But specific to mobile, really good cameras, so we don't have that many issues around mobile. Interesting. Um, 
How does the developer put this in? Is it like a line of JavaScript or something? Well, or? it's a little bit more than that, but okay. what we've found is that for a standard NetSwipe implementation, that's what I just showed with Travelocity, it's anywhere, it's about 30 minutes to an hour's work of a developer's time to integrate our SDK. Yeah. And then it can be customized however the client would like it, but it's not a big deal. Um, which is a, it's a, that's a good ROI for a relatively you know big boost or any kind of boost even at a one percent boost it's it's a it's a good ROI for that sort of thing. If if I was going to build a new kind of social network because Facebook really uh, forced you to use a, a real name and people use fake ones once in mm -hmm. a while but uh, generally I'm Robert Scoble in real life and on online but I have I didn't wasn't asked to prove that in any way. And if I built a new social network, I'd want to prove it so that everybody yeah. on the system is re a real person. Yeah. How many how many different forms of ID can you uh, deal with? You know, because California yeah. driver's license probably automatic because you're here in California. Yeah. But. Well, we we handle driver's licenses, passports, and government IDs issued by sixty different countries. Wow. And in the U.S. alone, I mean, there's fifty different licenses. So there's a lot to manage at the back end. Uh, no doubt about that. But you know, anonymity was a big part of the growth of the web. It made for this exciting environment where anybody could be anyone. Anyone can say anything they want. Yeah. If you ever read comments after a news story, it's just horrific. Just go people, to go to YouTube or Reddit, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just horrific what anonymity enables people to do. And I think your your uh, your comment is noteworthy that if you were starting a social network today, you'd want it to be a uh, an in the light social network, people who join have to stand up and be who they are yeah. because it does promote a different kind of behavior. Well, and, and also it enables all sorts of other things. Like I, uh, I believe we're heading into a world of context and if you know something more about me or the system does, it yes. can serve me. It can uh, bring me better news or bring me better experiences and mm -hmm. unlock new, new, new experiences for me in life. Right, and, um, and a lot of those like Airbnb want to know that you're actually a, a real person that has a real credit history, et cetera, And it is accountable and a renter can trust with their home. Yeah. Well, um, the former example you gave is sort of a nice to have, you know, how to serve more relevant information to someone. But much of what we do in, in, in commerce today is must have. So if you want to transfer money, there's $1.2 billion money transfers a year that originate in the U.S. That's a lot. Every one of those, <clears throat> the industry is obligated to quote unquote KYC, the customer, know your customer, the acronym's KYC, um, because of the anti-money laundering uh, rules and fears. If you want to open up uh, an options trading account, there's rule 405, NYSE rule 405, know your customer. Um, all sorts of things. If you want to open up a betting account in London to bet with uh, Mr. Green or any of those uh, um, gaming companies, you have to prove your age and your jurisdiction. So all of the, there's so many things that are driven by regulation. And the question is, how do you do that when you're not face to face? And the yeah. only answer the industry had is the good old fax machine or send something to somebody via the post and then maybe eventually they'll review it. And we've collapsed that down to a real time process that's, that's more secure for the business and uh, better data and then uh, an experience that consumers like. And I'm not just saying that like most companies who are sitting here with you might say, we see the comments that people write like in the Airbnb app uh, blog or in Travelocity's app review and iTunes, where people go out of their way to talk about the scanning as something cool. And the word that kept coming up is wow. Like this is a real wow factor. And I think every app developer is looking for the types of, of facilities they can put inside yeah. their apps that, that differentiate and create better consumer experiences. And that's what we're thinking about as much as fraud reduction or clean transactions. Because we all know we could make the, the bar so high on the fraud control that kind of kills all the consumers. Everyone runs screaming from yeah. it if you make the process too bad. And we've managed, I believe, to do both, make the process better for consumer and better results for the business. Well, it'll, it'll be really interesting to see when, as Google Glass comes out next year, uh, you know, I want to do a lot of transactions with this. I believe a, a a commerce world is coming over the next decade with this kind of computer that you talk to. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say, hey, bring me a beer. I'm at the Ritz Carlton in Half Moon Bay. Please bring me a beer and make that happen. And we're starting to see signs that that's going to happen. You know, Uber works sort of like that, right? I mm -hmm. click a button on my screen and say, hey, bring me a, a ride. And it just happens, right? I don't even have, have to pass that's right. my credit card well. to that driver anymore. It, it just happens. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So I, I'm going to need more and more of these kinds of systems that I identify who I really am and then have my credit card uh, available. That's right. Et cetera, et cetera. With the consumer having the control yeah. to push it into a transaction or not. But core to everything is knowing that whatever went into the system has, is real and validated and based on a real standard. And that's what passports are or that's what credit cards are. And that's what we're building our sort of core processes on. The fact that there are great forms of ID and they're physical forms. How do we translate those to a virtual now there's lots of uh, wallet companies. Lemon is one of the mm -hmm. ones I'm thinking of. There's I don't know five or six competitors. Google tried to do this with Google Wallet and stuff, where yeah. you put all of your documents into this thing, and partly just to back it up. So if you get your wallet stolen, you know yes. who to call, <laughs> you know, and cancel all your credit cards and you know what what you need to know. But also to make it easier to. Mm -hmm. uh, do transactions because you can just pass your lemon wallet over to it and say you charge my uh, credit card. That's are, right. are you thinking of doing a wallet like that where you would scan well, all the documents in your life, you know, your passport, your your driver's license, and your credit card, and your business card, and all that fun well, stuff? Well, there's, there's really a crying need for it. Yeah. And today when we talk about mobile uh, wallets, really what people are saying is is payment apps. And as we know, in a wallet, and you just pointed it out, it's more than just credit cards we keep in there. We've got all these other important credentials. But today, there is no really great credential app. There's no single accepted way that you can, yeah. on your device, carry everything that proves who you are and have people accept that. So yeah. that's a long-term goal that we're, that we're working towards. And Very see cool. a giant gap there. While on the payment side, with 300 companies all dealing with different aspects of payments, it's a lot more complex. And there's different solutions that will come to play there. Very cool. It's going to be interesting to watch companies like yours and, and the other ones to, uh, uh, bring this new world where I just want, want things to get delivered well, to me without having to pull out my wallet. It's, uh, you know, the, the phrase reducing friction is very au courant, but the fact is it's, it's, it's one of those basic tenets of how you do business better is by making things easier for people. Remember when Safeway wasn't open 24-7? Yep. Now it is. So. When you reduce friction and, and you take out barriers and obstacles, people transact more. So what you described, the simple ability to get a ride and have it be paid for or buy something and, and, and meet all the regs and know it's a safe transaction, that's got to be simpler than it is today. Cool. Where do I learn more about your company? At jumio.com. Uh, how do you spell it? J-U-M-I-O. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robert.